Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dow from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet you today in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. We're thanking Him, and oh, what a thankful day it is for the ones who can recognize the day and the hour and the time that we are living in. So, We've come down uh, all through the Old Testament. We've come down through the church ages. We, we wound up the church ages. The messenger, all the messengers have come on the scene. They've given their message. And now the, the mysteries have been revealed. And that's what, that the believers this day, that's what, uh, they are enjoying the mysteries of things that have been hid. Some of these things that had been hid back in the very mind of God. It was the very thoughts of God being revealed in this day had never been let out in all this time. And here we are. We have uh, access to them by the way of the message that God has just given in this day by His, His servant by his prophet, by his messenger, uh, Brother William Brown. And so we have access to it, and we, we, can, we can read it, we can be inspired, we can live it, we can see ourselves in it. Uh, it's like looking uh, in, a, in a mirror, you say, well, that, that's me, that's me, that's exactly the way that I feel, that's the way I think, that's the way I believe. And so it's a, it's a great day. But on the other hand, it's a terrible day. Uh, that's what the Bible said it would be a great and a terrible day. And I was thinking about uh, the sword this morning. He said it's, it's a sharp two-edged sword. Well, one way the sword cuts you free from all this other stuff, and another way the sword can really uh, destroy. So uh, the sword is either something that's setting you free from uh, your old desires, from the world, from sin, from everything else, or it's something that's cutting you asunder. So uh, the choice can be up to the individual which way the sword is swinging towards them. So uh, God has made a way, and we know that the way of Jesus Christ, the Word. So we thank Him for that. That's come this day. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You again today. Lord, it's so great to know the day and the hour of the time that we're living in. Lord, to know our position in it, to know uh, who You are, where You are, all about You, and to, Lord, to know that where we are in this whole thing. So, Lord, we pray as we'll go through these uh, scriptures this morning and the message and so on that you would once again open the word Lord uh, just let the inspired word come forth to the people to be food for the hearer and bless us as we come together in the name of Jesus Christ amen so I'm going to take a little subject this morning your <clears throat> position in Christ, your position in Christ. And that's going to be what we're going to kind of be working with today. And I'm going to read uh, out of Ephesians, the first chapter. And I'm, <clears throat> the, reading, the reason I'm reading, I'm reading this is because it's what Brother Rand made reference to this scripture. And so it'll go along uh, with the message. So, uh, it's going to be your position in Christ. So if you want to turn over to Ephesians 1, let's read verses uh, 3 through 5 there. Blessed, <clears throat> blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. Now, he said, who hath blessed us. Not he's going to bless us. He's already blessed us. 
with all, A-L-L, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. No, it's not going. We're already there. We're already blessed. Verse 4, according as he, who God, has chosen us in him. And now listen, he's chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So God chose us by his fault of us. Because there was nothing. This was before the foundation. There wasn't. Brother, brother, there wasn't a molecule. There wasn't nothing. There was only God and His thoughts. But way back there, He, it says, He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. So that's how He's chosen. And that's how we're going to be. And there's nothing going to stop it from happening. Now listen, having, pre how's He going to do it? How's this going to be? Having predestinated us, and people, they just think that word predestination just shakes them all up. But it's a Bible word, and God has done exactly that having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So his will is God's will. It's the word and there's nothing going to change it because man cannot change it. Now, so before we get to the mess, I've got a couple of things I want to read. I want to drop these in because I figured this would be a, a good place to do it. And this is out of the Revelation series there, chapter 5, part 2 there in 1961 there in Jeffersonville. And I'm reading this uh, for a purpose. Now, and this seven seal book of the seven redemptive plans has been brought to us and that's what this book holds. Now we're going to get over into the 10th chapter, and he's talking about the 10th chapter of Revelation, where this mighty angel proclaimed something. And he had a little book that John had to eat. Okay, now we're coming down, because John was our time. And when he did, it got in his belly and it was bitter, but in his lips it was sweet. And now, when you have to digest it, it gets bitter. Everybody's against you. Everybody's telling you you're a holy roller. Or you're this, that, or the other. See, you're, you're off your head. Well, look here. If, if you believe the revelation of Jesus Christ this day, boy, you're going to get a lot of that because they just can't comprehend they think you have lost your mind. They can't comprehend even what you're talking about because you're talking about a spiritual something and they're talking about a natural something. He said you're off your head. So it's hard to digest it. But when you're testifying of His glory, it's sweet in your lips. Amen. And when you're telling this, and when God is pouring it out, oh, it is sweet as honey coming out of your mouth. And that's all, see? And when you stand up in a meeting and say, glory to God, hallelujah, or when you're going through that great siege, and boy, I tell you what, when you try to do it, you'll be like, Every messenger down through the time, they got you seized off on, on all four corners. They think they got you surrounded and you don't even know what first base is at. And so that's what they think. And it's hard when, you, when you're out there in the great sea, you can testify. Then it's sweet in your lips. See, that's right. That's that book of redemption. Well, that's the book that we eat and it was what bitter in the belly but it's sweet on the and sweet in the mouth so 
That's the way of a true believer this day. When you tell somebody that the Lord has come, that you've been raptured, that the resurrection is not in the graveyard, the resurrection is in here. This is where the resurrection, this is where the seed comes to life. You're not talking about some old denominational resurrection that's been through the dark age. You know the truth. You know where Christ is. He's not up on, on some chair up in the air somewhere. He's down here living in you. And you are him walking around. But you think, Phew. they think, well, this guy thinks he's God. He's lost his mind. Okay. But that's just how it's going to be. It's been that way. You Did, did you think that uh, Pharaoh had talked to Moses and said, Moses, you have lost your mind. What happened to you out there in the desert? You come trotting in here with your stick and you telling me to let, let my people go. You better get out of here. See, but it said that Moses was a nut to Pharaoh, but Pharaoh was a nut to Moses. So it's just according to which side you're on. And it's, you just follow it all the way down through the, the scripture. How about when uh, Elijah come up to Ahab? Well, he said, who is this old guy? What's wrong with him? But who was right? Whose prophecy come to pass? And it's going to happen. It has happened all down through time. And it's not going to change down here. So, now, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, you're thinking about things. And this, this thought come to me the other day about Hebrews 11. About how the, the continuity of, of the word and the message comes together because the word come from God, the message comes to God. Brother Brown was just the mouthpiece that God used to deliver it. And now I'm going to look over here in, in uh, Hebrews 11 uh, verses 5 and 6 and uh, get this and then take it to the message and see what he said about it. By faith... Enoch was translated. How was Enoch translated? Oh, well, he just flew, and he flew off somewhere. That ain't what the scripture said. It says by faith he was translated. Well, we know where he went. Some people, you ask them, well, where did Enoch go? Well, he went to heaven. No, he didn't. Heaven wasn't even open then. Christ hadn't came and died. There was only one place he could go, was to paradise. If you believe the scripture, so he didn't fly off somewhere like they claim that we're going to fly away somewhere. By faith, he was translated. By faith, God re revealed to him that he should not see death. Well, a believer don't die. This body goes back, but the believer's not. Brother Brown said, death only changes your dwelling place. Well, look here. I'm here, and then this body dies, and I just move on to the other dimension. It's only just a that a way that he should not see death and was found not. Well, they couldn't find nothing about him. Well, what happened to his body? Because God had translated him before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. How did he please God? With his faith. And how can you please God with your faith? But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Him who? God. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, not He was or will be, He is. And that's the only way you, where you'll find God is in the present because He is present. 
must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that's the ones he's rewarding, not somebody just flying by. Well, you know, I, I pray a little bit, you know, and I go to church every now and then, and sometimes I pick up the Bible and I read a few verses, and, you know, just like, Phew. No, he's rewarding them that diligently seek him. That word diligent means painstakingly. You're putting forth some effort. Now, so we know how Enoch was translated. He was translated by faith. And he didn't see death. Now, over here in the rapture message, there in Yuma 1965, Brother Brown made this statement. But to the church, the bride, the rapture is a revelation to her. Well, Brother Brown, what is a revelation? He said, it's revealed to her. It's what this rapture is revealed to her. Now, he said, the rapture is. Well, they got the rapture going to be. That's what the, the world of religion, theirs is yet to happen. But he says, this one here, the bride, the rapture is a revelation to her. It's revealed to her. Well, how did Enoch get out of here? And remember, Enoch was our type. He was the seventh from Adam. And he said it's the seventh church age that takes the rapture. Well, the seventh church age is finished. He said it was. I don't know how many places, but you can't get these people to believe what he said. They believe their own idea of what they heard in their words by their carnal mind. That's what they believe he said. Now, so this rapture is revealed to her that the revelation, the true, if there's a true bride, there must be a false bride somewhere. Amen. The true bride of Christ will be waiting for that revelation of the rapture. Now, it is a revelation for revelation is faith. So, how did Enoch get out of here? It was revealed to him. Revelation is faith. Because it's something that's revealed to you. Faith is a revelation. Faith is something that's been revealed to you like was to Abraham that he could call everything contrary to what had been revealed to him. And as though it wasn't so, now faith, that's what faith is is do you believe what he said that's what faith is is the revelation of god the church is built upon revelation oh no the church is built upon what the preacher said not so look here the devil's got more preachers in this thing than god has i guarantee you because you can see the results out there in the world so, the church is built upon revelation, the whole entire body. If you get in, it's by revelation. If you get raptured, it's by revelation. Whatever you do, it's by revelation. That's how God chose and he didn't change his mind about it. Now, I was thinking the other night, and this come to my mind that the trump the trumpet is a symbol of the voice of God because all through uh, the book of Revelation the trumpet 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 but he said the book of Revelation is a book of symbols so he, even John said I heard his voice as a trumpet but it was it wasn't going doodle doodle do it was speaking something John heard it. So, the trumpet is a symbol of the voice of God, not a brass horn blowing. And that's about what they think. Well, you know, one day the horn's going to blow and we're all going to be sucked up out of our shoes and we'll all take off. 
And that's what they're waiting for. They'll tell you that. The trumpet was the message. That's what the trumpet sound was. It was the message of God. He said, if the trumpet give a... Un well, this was not an uncertain sound. This was a certain direct sound directly from God Almighty Himself. What? To give us the very backside of His mind. And He had to have someone to bring it through. The trumpet was a message, and it's a clear, distinct voice calling God's elect. And if you got called, you've heard the trumpet sound. You've heard the message of your day, the message of your hour. And this message of this hour is a complete, not a piece or a part like they had down through the church ages. This message is a complete revelation of Jesus Christ. Some guy was trying to tell me the other day, oh, that Brother Branham, he didn't finish all the mysteries. He didn't finish. I said, well, I said you got a lot of nerve saying that he didn't finish when Brother Branham said he did finish. He said this is a complete revelation of Jesus Christ. What can you add to complete? Well, they're trying to, but Look here, they're going to be really, really surprised. Now, talking about this trumpet, let's see what he said here. Because what I said goes right along with what he has said. That's how it, that's how it makes sense. That's how it comes together. That's how it's part of the Word. In Uniting Time and Sign there in Jeffersonville, 1963, and listen to what he said. Revelations 10 said the seventh angel's message. Now remember, that's right at the seven trumpets. And there are seven angels blowing seven trumpets. That's what we're coming to next. But remember, there very specifically, it said the angels, not the seventh angel's trumpet, but the seventh angel's message. Did you hear what he said? Did you get that? Not the trumpet, it's the message. See, not the trumpet angel, the message angel, the angel only sounded the trumpet, the seventh angel. The trumpet angel was this, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when, when his message is finished. The trumpet is this, the message. My See, that's the church age message, and this time he would the message, not the trumpet. So everybody's waiting for the trumpet. Well, I got news for you. The trumpet has blown, and it was loud, and it was clear, and it was distinct. And look at there, what no guessing about what he said. He said, and the mystery of God that's written in the Word should be finished. The trumpet angel equals the message, the voice. The trumpet had a voice. And it was God's message to the, what, to the world. Well, the world didn't have an ear to hear. They just thought, that's a bunch of noise going on. Mm -hmm. That's what they still think today. Now, let's go over here. We want to get in just a few quotes here on the, your position in Christ. And I want to start with Christ is the mystery of God revealed. And this Christ is the mystery is such a tremendous message. It was a long message and the whole thing was just God laying out the very mystery of himself. So let's see what he said here now. He said, how do you get into Christ Jesus? By joining church? Congregation said, no. By a birth. By one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12. And that's 12, 13. We're all baptized into one body. One body. And what is that body? It's the body of Christ. It's God's body. 
All right. And that's the ones he's talking to. He ain't addressed to the outside world. So the things we're talking about, the outside world, they don't care one thing about this. This is just gibberish. It's just static in the air somewhere. So it's not even to them. It's not to the outside. He said, we can't talk to the sinner on this. The sinner's not interested in this. He's interested in, in his sin. That's what, he's, that's what he's here for. That's why. Because he knows nothing about it. Paul didn't address it to, to no sinners. He said, this is that. That group. That's in Christ Jesus. So, if you go back and check every one of Paul's uh, letters, he starts out, to the brethren, to the saints, to the believers. Because he's writing, he's not writing this to the world. He's writing those to the ones that are believers in Christ. And so, that's the group. Well, what do you think the message went to? It went out amongst the, the religious world, but all they heard was a was a, a man speaking. The bride heard the word. The bride heard Christ. Because there was something in there to respond to it. So, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. And he's got a question here. Whereabouts is all these blessings? In heavenly places in Christ. That's where the blessings are. Heavenly places in Christ. Now, this is where this whole message kind of started from right here. And he goes on. Heavenly places. Oh, I wish I had time. I've got it marked right here in my Bible. Heavenly places. What is heavenly places? Heavenly places. Just for a moment. The believer's position in Christ. So if you're in Christ, you're in heavenly places. Oh, they think, well, you know, that must be, there's, there's, a, there's a, oh, it's your position in Christ. Well, who is Christ? Christ was the Word made flesh. So it's your position in the Word. Are you part of the Word? If you're part of Christ, you're part of the Word because He was the Word. What? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, and when He was made flesh, we were in Him. Hmm. That's what the Bible said. But no, no, they were, well, one day we're going to make it. Well, we have, we have made it. That's our position. So he said, the believer's position in Christ. See? Where the believer stands in Christ. Heavenly places according, now listen, according as He has chosen us. Listen close. And when He says listen close, He's fixing to say something. It's not like reading a newspaper, you whoop, run on by. When He says listen close, you listen. Chosen it chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. And that's what we was talking about just a while ago. Before there was anything, we were already chosen. And who's going to unchosen us? You think the government? You think the devil? Whoever? Some unbeliever? Some church group somewhere? You know, I was listening to a tape the other day, and Brother Bradley said, he said, some guy told me, he said, Brother Brandon, if your name is not on our church book, you are lost. He said, could you believe somebody to believe such as that? That is Antichrist. Well, no doubt there's people that believe that. Still today, probably more than ever. Look here. You 
must be in Christ. So, now, say, he said, now, when did he choose us? Before the foundation of the world. When this, when his great hidden mystery, his great secret, he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in what? Love. God loved us. Having what? <laughs> yeah, having what? Predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to his good pleasure of his will. Amen. So, I tell you what, once once you get anchored and, and centered in Christ, there ain't nothing going to shake you. I don't care what comes or goes. I don't care what the devil, what he knocks on your door, what he leaves on your doorstep. There's nothing going to shake you because you know who you are and you know what goes with the territory. Now, he goes on. He says, predestinated? That's the mystery he chose before Christ or anything else was ever on earth. How about that? Predestinated? That's the mystery he chose before there was everything. You see, his great mystery. He chose the bride. Before, when? Before the foundation of the world. Knowing Eve would fall. You mean he sent Eve down here knowing she was going to fall? Absolutely, because he's omniscient. He knows everything. Brother Brown said he knows how many fleas there are in the world and how much grease they got in them. That's omniscience. And look here, our mind can't even fathom that, but that's to God that we serve, that we're part of. Now, knowing that Eve would fall from disbelieving the word, knowing that she would fall, but he chose a bride that would not fall. Now, if God chose you way back there, you was a thought in his mind and he thought of you and he said that this bride is not going to fall. The, the real true bride is not going to fall because God has predestinated her not to fall. That's pretty good, ain't it? Can you believe that? <clears throat> so, that would hold... Why is she not going to fall? Because she holds to that word regardless of what all the rest of the world had to say about it. Well, look here, if you're waiting for the world to agree with you, if you're waiting for the world, the world of religion to agree with you, uh, you are among most men most miserable because they can't agree with you. They can't agree with the word because they're not part of it that would hold to that word. They are predestinated to stand. And sometimes you wonder, well, you know, just how, how, can, how, can I, how can I make it? Because you're predestinated to make it. Look here. Yes, you just keep holding on, holding on, knowing who you are, knowing your position in Christ. And believe what He said about you. He did say it. He said this about us. And it took a prophet to come on the scene to get back into the mind of God and bring out what God thought of us. And ain't nothing going to change it. That would hold to the word. They're predestinated to stand. The adoption of children by Jesus Christ. Predestinated to the church. That glorious stand. Yeah. When the devil's all around, he's got his gun. He's got his gun on you. You just stand there. Said, fire away, devil. You ain't got no part in me. You ain't got nothing to do with me. I've been born again. I've shut off that old birth that you give us here 
That old sex verse, I've shook it off. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. I know my position. I know in whom I have believed and He is able. Amen. Don't mess around with the devil. If he come gets in your face, like Brother Brown said, this comes back. He said, you know, one time this guy had, I think it was a dream or something, and he said, the devil come up and said, boo. And he said, when the devil said boo, he said, I got smaller. And he said, boo again. And he said, I got, I got smaller and smaller. And directly, I said, boo back, devil. And the devil got smaller. Well, when you know that you are a child of God, when you know that you are a purchased product of Jesus Christ, and you know the devil ain't got nothing to do with you, you can do that. Well, if you're up there wondering, well, I wonder if this is going to work. Well, if you wonder if it's going, it's not going to work, wondering is not faith. Faith is knowing. It's a no-so. Now, Talking about faith. How about a message called perfect faith? Amen. Well, perfect faith. Only I know you could have perfect faith if you had the very faith of God. And that's what He has given us. Now, let's see what He said here. Now, remember your position in Christ. Now, watch. Now, and He said to us, if you abide in me, in my word, abide in you, St. John, you can ask what you will, and it'll be done. Listen, then recognize your position in the scripture as a believer. Ooh. Well, my position as a believer? Well, I tell you, we just read part of it right there in Ephesians 1. Look here. In heavenly places, in Christ, you've already been chosen. You're chosen of God before the foundation of the world. Well, recognize your position in the Scripture. Look here. I'm not, in, I'm not in Noah's day. I'm not in Moses' day. I'm not in Elijah's day. I'm not in Luther, Wesley, Pena. I'm not in those days. I'm down here in the bride age. That's where I'm at with the full revelation of Jesus Christ. Recognize your position and what God has given you. That's right. Recognize your position in the Scripture as a believer. See, you got to recognize your position. He said that twice. Well, why can't you recognize it? You got the thing inside of you to recognize with. You got the Holy Ghost the one that wrote this, the one that did all these things, and surely he and you will recognize. I don't know. So you got to recognize. Now listen. Well, how did Jesus recognize who he was? As he recognized his position. Well, Jesus knew, ex knew exactly who he was. Remember on the road to Emmaus when he's come out and was walking along with the brothers there, Cleopas and his friend, and they said, well, what's going on? They said, oh, you, did, you haven't heard Jesus of Nazareth. We thought he was a prophet, and we thought he was the one. And he started all the way back at Moses, and he gave them what the Messiah was to be, because he identified himself in the Word. He knew he was that Word. And we know that we are the Word for this day. Because there's a Word for every day and every age. And I can't go back to any other's day. I got to live the Word for my day. So... He knew who he was by the Scripture. Well, we knew who we are. What did it say? Right there in the book of Revelation, right at the end, the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Amen. We know who we are. My goodness. Look here. And we was talking about a while ago about John eating the book. That's us. That's our word for our day. Look here. John was our type. 
He saw that in the vision. We've done it in the in the reality of it. We have eaten the book. We have eaten the word. And we become the word. And it calls it bitter on the inside. But I tell you what, it's sweet when you're talking about it. It's a matter of fact, it's sweet right now. But not to them, no sir. No, no, no. Now let's go a little further here. So. <clears throat> We know our position because it's told to us in the Word. Now look away to Jesus there in Jeffersonville, 63. He said, Sir, he was convinced that there was more than a man. He was thoroughly convinced that it was more than a man, certainly. But what? His politics. Now he's talking about old, old Pilate here. But his politics and popularity was too great. And that's a lot of people's problem today. Their popularity and so on is just too great. Well, you know, if I told somebody I believe that, then they thought I lost my mind. Okay. Well, go ahead. He turned him down. His popularity was too great. The politics, his position in life was too great to accept this fanatic. And that's where a lot of people are today. They said, well, you know what? If I was to talk about the things you talk about, the people think I lost my mind. They think I went crazy. Mm -hmm, they probably will. Look here. Every time a true believer has caught the revelation of the Word, that's the first thing they said. Oh, he's lost his mind. He's went off the deep end. How about even Jesus Christ come here and they called him, they said, he's mad, he's crazy, he's got a devil. And who was it in him saying those things? It was a devil in the ministry that was saying he was the devil. Can you? Yes, I can. Absolutely. But see, their position. They'll lose their position. Oh, if I told that to my congregation, they'd scatter like a covey of quail. Yes, they probably would. And you would be out of a job. You know, Brother Brown, he never did care about that. In 1958, I mean, he, he started out with that ministry in 1946. I mean, he was going here, there, across the seas, everywhere, up and down the coast and up and down the country and everywhere else with signs, wonders, miracles, and made no glory to God that it was God with him. And he comes out in 1958 and he preaches the serpent seed. Brother Branham, how could you say that the, the devil got into that serpent and had sex with Eve. What are you talking about? It didn't stop him. He preached it and he never quit preaching it. Did what you think he was worried about a crowd leaving him? They left him because they had to leave the word. The pattern had to be fulfilled. Jesus, when he got to the cross, how many was there? Cheered him on. Huh. Look here, when Paul finished his ministry, how many was there when they cut his head off? Same thing with all ministries. They all leave you because they don't believe you anymore. Amen. So, <clears throat> wonder how many pilots would be listening to this. Yeah, I'm wondering too. How many pilots that's afraid of your position because if you come out and, and, and toe the line with the truth, yeah. He said that your position in some denomination or how about in some message church somewhere would be too great to accept the real Lord Jesus standing in the position he is in, he is too day. Well, where is he standing? He's right here in his body, his wife. He's not out there floating around somewhere. He's not coming. He's already here. And she is him. And everybody's wanting to know, oh, where, 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 there's going to be a literal coming. Yeah. <clears throat> but there was a literal coming, but not like you thought. 
You thought that the body of 2,000 years ago was going to one day drop down in the sky. Well, I've got news for you. That's not our promise. Our promise is the literal body is Christ himself in his body. Look here. It started out with the prophet, and the prophet gave the word. We accepted the word. We become the body. She is him, Christ, the literal body of God on the earth. But no, not to them. They said, that's crazy. You people think you're God? Amen. I don't think I am. I know I am. I know where he's at. Not the outside, the inside. My. But they can't grasp that. They don't have nothing to grasp it with. So, <clears throat> so he's in his body. And then the last part of this quote, the Roman soldier at the cross looked at Jesus, but what happened? He looked too late. He had done kill the prince of life. Look here. Somebody had to do it. And he done it. And I wonder how many are killing him, Christ the Word, today, right there in their pulpit. Brother Brown said that's where he gets his his hardest pierces and thrust and everything, right at the pulpit. Huh. Now let's go on. Your position in Christ. Well, I hope when we get through, you'll know that if you've got a position, you know where it's at. Now, future home of the heavenly bridegroom and the earthly bride there in Jefferson, 1964. Now, the Methodists said, when you shout, you got it. A lot of them shout and shouted and didn't have it. The Pentecost said, when you speak in tongues, you got it. Many spoke in tongues and didn't have it. I bet you that disfrosted them when they heard that. Well, you know, that's the initial evidence. And that's what you say. Look at all kind of forms from these Pharisees had. But when the Word was made manifest, they didn't recognize it. See, see. Yeah, and so as it again today, when the word was made manifest, they thought it was fanaticism. Not surprised. You know, sometimes we look at these things and we say, how could? But look here, if you don't have anything to, to accept it with, how can you accept it? Just like he said, you can't get blood out of a turnip. Why? There's no blood in there. Well, how can you get belief out of an unbeliever? <laughs> but there's no belief there. It's mighty simple. And the rock is not going to raise up because it's just a rock. It's just a plot of dirt that's all put together. There's no life in it. I don't care how much sun shines on it. And the sun is a life giver to the seed. Not to the dirt. Now, look, all kind of forms, but they didn't recognize it. And if you, if, 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 if you are the bride, the bride is part of the husband. And if the only place that you'll ever recognize it is to recognize what part of the husband that word. The husband is the word. So, the, what part of the husband you are? Well, I, I, I know which part of the word I am. I'm the word that's living today because it is a living word. God is a living word. Or you can't recognize being the bride. How many sees that congregation says amen? See, you have to recognize your position. Well, I don't know. But you ought to know that all this information that he's given, and give it so simple, just poured it out. You should be able to just read one message. Christ is the mystery of God and know exactly who you are, who He is, and all about Him. 
you know, a lot of these messages and the Brother Brown preached, they was out there just a month, almost what you'd call the nominal churches. People wanting to see a sign or a wonder. People went there hoping that he would call them out and he would heal them. They never come really come for the word. Look at here. That's what it, whatever you need is in this word. Not out of it, in it. So, yeah. What part of the husband that that word you are? Well, we're the part that's living today. Come to find out we're his body here upon the earth. Look here. It come all the way up. And he said the head come down. <laughs> and the head come down. So what part are you? We're not the feet. We're not there. He said, up there, Pentecost was the lips, the tongue. Well, what's next? The intelligence of God. We have the mind of Christ. People want to know about, oh, the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. Well, you have the mind of Christ. How could you have Christ and not have his mind? You think he just come in all but the mind? Oh, I'll tell you what, people are so silly that it is really almost ridiculous. Holding on to something to come out of the dark age. Calling it the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, door in a door there in Flagstaff, 1965. But you see, it's like the church has to pass through the hall of critics. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. you got to pass through the hall of critics. And he was... I think if I remember this a message, he was talking about this great painting. He said, you know, everything has to go through the hall of critics. I don't care what it is. They, they have to get out, and it has to be scrutinized all, all up and down and back and to and all which are ways. And they, every, nowadays, they got all kind of critics. They got, they got food critics. They got movie critics. They got critics about critics. But look at here. The church has to go through the hall of critics. He said, we go through. You're going to be called holy reveler. You're going to be called everything. But if you could only hold your position in Christ. Look here. I've been called every name in the book. Do you think that bothered me? You think I believe what they say? Well, they don't believe what I say, and I surely don't believe what they say. But what is it? You have to go through that. That's part of this. You ain't going to have a flowery bed of ease. Uh, you think everybody was going around patting Paul on the back? Oh, there's old brother Paul. Come on, Paul. No, they was trying to kill him, and finally did kill him. But, so, you're going to be called everything, that's part of it, if you've got the truth. Now, if you, go with the, if you go with the modern trend, if you flow with them, oh, everything is nice. They'll call you brother, and they'll invite you to the church, and they'll, they'll set you up, and all these kind of things. Uh -uh. But he said, if you can only hold your position, well, why couldn't we hold our position? We have been predestinated to hold it. We've been predestinated to stand. In Christ, then somebody, he'll take us to the hall of fame. Yeah, if you can get through the hall of critics, you know where you're going? You're going to the hall of fame. But first, we've got to stand criticism. Well, Brother Ram stood it from the very time he started. Oh, here he comes. Here comes that soothsayer. He's got the halo over his head. And blah, blah, blah. And this, that, and the other. And everybody, every devil on the earth trying to trap him and trip him up. But did they trap? No. God, God protected that gift all the way through. So we've got to stand criticism. There is where the littleness of us stand. There is where it shows. 
He that cannot stand chastisement is an illegitimate child and not a child of God. No matter how much he's joined church or whatever he's done, he is still, if he cannot stand chastisement, he's an illegitimate child. And he's not a real child of God, but a real genuine child of God don't care what the world says. Why would I care of what the world says? The world ain't got nothing to do with this. They ain't got a word in it. And people get all shook up about what the world's going on. Get your eyes off of the world and get them squarely on Christ. Uh, so, a real child of God don't care what the world says. Everything else is secondarily. He's got his mind on Christ and that settles it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I got my mind. Look here. I got my foot on the rock and my mind made up. That's the main thing. I, my mind's made up. It's not, it's not a, I'm not a double-minded person. Look at here, if you're double-minded, I'm scared of you. So, he's got his mind on Christ and that sells it. Yes, whatever Christ says, he'll do it. Whatever the Lamb goes, he says, with him, what, what, wherever. And then you see his appearing and his presence. Glory to God, we've seen it. We've seen it. No doubt about it. Christ come on the scene because they said, Brother Brown, no man can do these things that you do except God be with him. Amen. My. And what he does, he's always with his people, his bride. He is courting her. Someday there's going to be a wedding supper. There's going to be, amen, praise God. Now, in the Easter seal, and they're in Phoenix, 1965. Listen, it's God's promise. He said he'd pour out his spirit in the last days, and that's what he, he would do. Notice, laid their hands on the sick, everything that was in God's promise, I'll pour out my spirit in the last days upon all flesh. Your old man shall dream dreams, your young man shall see vision, and all these different promises that he made everything is laid right there in God's promise. Jesus redeemed it. What did he redeem? He redeemed every promise for us. It's laying there. Look here. All you got to do is pick it up and use it. Well, you know, a lot of people... They're actually waiting. They're waiting for somebody else to pick it up. Look here. You got to claim. You got to claim your part of the ground. You got to claim your promise. I can't claim your promise. I can only claim mine. My goodness. You got to move out by faith. Now, he said Jesus redeemed it to us, 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 not them. And when, he, and when we become, oh, if we are ordained on that ground, if we are ordained to be on that ground, we're like that old eagle walking in the chicken's nest. If you're, <clears throat> if you're, if you're fine, you, you'll, you'll recognize its call. Hello, when we're talking about the voice, the trumpet, the voice, the message, Look here. And his spirit is here to find you. Now, nah, praise the Lord. The spirit is here to find you. Just like the mama eagle flying over the little chicken pen said, Hey, that's my, that's my child down there. Come on up. And he recognized that call because he wasn't a chicken. He was an eagle to begin with. And look at here, we down here in this, this pen, but we don't belong here. That's what God come along to get us out of here. So, and when he finds you, you recognize the call, you know the hour that you're living. You know the hour that you're living. You know these things are supposed to happen. Well, 
Why do we know they haven't? Because they're right here in the Bible. The messenger has come and pointed right straight to them. Quickly, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Quickly, you're raptured up to meet it. My goodness. Well, that's a different rapture than they've been telling me about. They thought that we was going to fly away. Oh, when he calls you, my, my, my. Let me read that again. Quickly, you're raptured up to meet it, and now you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My goodness. What the message does hold. What these truths. And it's contrary to what the churches have got. Well, what have they got? They got some kind of old denominational thing. Everything's out in the future. It's either way back in the past or it's over here in the future. And God's not doing anything right now. We're just sitting here kind of... No. God's doing a lot. But not to them. Uh, so quickly you're raptured up to meet it and now sitting in heavenly places. Oh, what a promise. What a heavenly Father who would give us these things. Amen. Now, remember your position in Christ. Easter seal, 65, Phoenix. So Jesus, so full of this quickening power, said, if you can destroy this temple <clears throat> that took 40 years, and you thought to build it, raise it up in three days. Why? Why? Why could Jesus say that? Want to ask, want to ask you why? Why could Jesus say such a thing as that? He knew that he was. He knew the very word. He knew that. Let's listen. Amen. I wish I could make that stick. He knew who he was. He knew that every word that God had wrote in there of him had to be fulfilled. Amen. And it had to be. He knew that the one David spoke of. That, well, what's he talking about? Oh, there in the song, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My bones and they all stare at me. He knew. That's why he said, oh, if his cup could pass. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, thine be done. That's the attitude right there. That is the correct, not ours, but yours, God. That's the only thing that counts. We want to fulfill our part of the word. He said, now, <clears throat> Did you know you're the ones the Bible speaks of? Oh, you mean the Bible? Oh, we're living in Bible days. That's what somebody said. Oh, if we could have lived back. Well, look here. We're living in Bible days. We're living in our Bible days, not theirs. Theirs has been lived over. We're here living in our Bible days. He said, the congregation says, hey, do you know your position is in Christ? If you're if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Well, what's he talking about? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things pass away. Being born again. Did you know this word is just... Now listen. This word is just like everyday living to you. Because why? You are the word and you are living it. You are the living word. You're God's body on this earth. You get up. You have a cup of coffee. You do your chores. You go to work. You do, and it's just the word living. Well, what do you think the word would do? Would we stand in the corner, or we would we go off in some some some? Uh, What's in monastery? Would we go off in the monastery and go, Ooh. what? It's just this word that's living through you is just everyday living. And that's what the people think. Well, they think, oh, 
wounded, wouldn't it be? No. But didn't Jesus, he just went around every day. Just doing what he was supposed to do. He didn't fly off over here and do that. No, he just won that one day at a time. And then finally, the main part of the word had to be fulfilled. He had to be crucified. Now, so, why sure, it's yours. You're an eagle. That's your food. Now, we're going to close with this. Your position in Christ. Power of transformation there in Prescott, 1965. See, whatever it is, that's what we want. And I believe it was David said, I would rather be a doormat in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents with the wicked. Amen, me too. You see, no matter what it is, take, he said, take my place. Here, if the word says I'm to be that, glory to God, let's get to it. And I would rather be a doormat in the house of the Lord than to dwell with, with the rich and luxurious wicked. But a lot of people, they sell out. They sell out for such a little thing about eternal life. Sometimes, now listen, and a lot of people just can't bring themselves to do it. Sometimes you have to separate from everything that's dear on the earth to you to take your position that God has called you to. Did you hear what he said? I'm sure you can read between the lines. Well, amen, Brother Brandon. We're reading. Look here. Not only are we reading, we've had these things happen. What I'm saying, see, sometimes the very dearest person on earth, you have to shake hands with them and just take your position in Christ to where God has called you. He's called you. He didn't call them. Look here. I don't know how many people along the way that that has happened because of beliefs and so on. One day, no matter how good, how, how best friends, whatever, one day you just have to separate. Well, didn't even Paul and Barnabas have to separate? Amen. Sometimes, because look here, that you, God called you, maybe he didn't call them to this. But it's you. He said, so you're to where God has called you, see? But what is God's doing? He's transforming you from what you was, maybe a, a daughter or a son or whatever it is, from a lovely family sometimes. He places you somewhere else because it's His way of doing it, see? By the renewing of your mind to obey the Word of God regardless of what the price is. Look here. Remember the rich young ruler? He said, Good Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, well, keep the commandments. He said, I have done that from my youth up. But if he was so secure, why was he coming to Jesus wanting to know about eternal life? And Jesus knew right, right what button to push. He said, sell what you have. Give it away and come follow me. And what happened? Mm -mm. The price was too great. And that's what's the trouble today. To follow, to really follow Jesus Christ, the word, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the price is just too great. The people, they want to be, they want to be well thought of. They want to be part of the, part of the group, part of the in crowd, part of the one. Well, Sometimes you might have to walk alone. Be part of that group. It's just you and Jesus. But remember, you're never alone. He said, I'll go with you all the way. I won't leave you. I'm going to the, all the way to the end. So, what, what would a man give to have eternal life? 
Well, it's not what you give, it's what you accept. He said, because this is a free gift, but you have to accept it in the way that he gives it. Now, is the price too great? What, could, what price could be more of a value, of a worth, than eternal life? You, you say, well, brother, uh, no, no. There's nothing that can compare. Look here, this little life here, it's, it's gone. Little struggles and the little good times and the bad times and all this, it's gone. But we're talking about eternal life. What? Could you, what could hold you to keep you from accepting that? Look here. Our position in Christ is we're with Christ. We was always with Him. We were with Him before the foundation of the world. And there's nothing going to change that. And look here. We predestinated to make it. God said we are going to make it. And we will, no matter what the world or anybody else says. Let them laugh and make fun and boo and cry, everything else, but it don't make no difference. We have already made it. We made it before the foundation of the world. Lord, we thank you again today. Lord, we thank you for the, the, the amazing truth of the Scripture and how, Lord, that you have brought it out how that you have brought it to us, that we could see it, that we could believe it, we could accept it, we could draw the benefits from it for it, and Lord, that we could know who we are, and we believe it, Lord. So we thank you for that. Now pray, God, that you'll continue to, to use us, and Lord, let us speak these truths, because it is so sweet in our lips. Even though the bitterness, Lord, the sweetness overcomes the bitterness that we can praise and glorify you by the word that we speak this day. We give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.